Hey everybody, I'm Mark, back here with Kenny. Hey, say hello, buddy. Hi. And we are here to help make uh, writing stories easier for you. Writing, as you probably all know by now, is far more collaborative than you ever would have imagined. Um, once you finish pounding out that draft in the shed, it's time to bring it out into the world. And uh, I'm sure you've been in various iterations of workshops and peer review, which is the academic term, which is awful, uh, sharing. Uh, you might have a support group that you meet someplace and the writing is kind of, you know, uh, subordinate to why you're really there. But we're here to uh, make these drafts uh, a little bit better. And uh, it it's, might sound a little counterintuitive how we're doing it, because above all, what you need to remember about how this works is that nobody is here to help or fix things or give advice or edit or any of those things. And if you trust me on that, uh, you're not, you're not going to believe how well this really works. All right, uh, so what do we have in the groups? How does that work? We have, we have a reader and a listener. Or uh, in this case, we have at least two, two listeners, right? And yeah. We call them responders, right? And we're doing this on Zoom. This is one of those few things that actually still works pretty well on Since In fact, it works a little better on Zoom for one interesting technical reason or technological reason. So what is this person going to do with their entire first draft the first time and then second draft when we do it later? What? Read the whole thing. Okay, they're reading. And what are these people doing? Discussing. Right now? Listening uh, and then right. discussing. They're listening, and they're listening in a particular way for particular things, and what they're not listening for is how I can fix this, all right? This is simple. As they listen, and it's probably, you know, there's another way where they read it twice, but we don't really have the time to fit that in, so we're going to do it this way. You're also taking some notes. Just jotting it down. You're just jotting little things down because you want all your attention to still be on this person. And how does that work, buddy? What are they listening for? Details. All right, so that's the pointing. It's called pointing. Anybody can do it. So instead of good intro, you might want to say, wow, I really like the way that George is described in paragraph one, and it's interesting how they show what's in the refrigerator with the chopsticks sticking out of the, the uh, styrofoam box. You would, you would put that kind of stuff, the, the actual details. All right, we're talking about storytelling, so above all, right, we want to be able to identify the conflicts. Okay, there's this one where the narrator uh, doesn't want to help George. And then, of course, there's the one that drives the rest of the story, which is the narrator and George trying to help George die. You know, you're going to write these things down. Write it down. And then the last one is, it's called Almost Said, right? And that's... Um, you know, when, when uh, the narrator was snorkeling underwater, I, I really wanted to see more of what the details of that undersea world looked like. Or when the narrator was uh, off at Safeway, I wanted to see a part about this. Or I was confused about this part. Or I wasn't sure about that part. Um, ab above all, you're using language that has to do with the narrative of your response to what you heard. You're not saying, hey, you should do this, or you need to fix that, or any of these things. Okay, and then um, these people um, are then going to share, after the reading is done, what are they gonna, who are they going to share with, dude? The other responder. Okay, if there's two of them or three of them, they're just going to share. And what is this person going to do? Mute. Okay, and above all, what? Not talk. Shut up. All right, um, these two are talking to each other, and the, the beautiful thing about Zoom is this person will also turn their video off. So there's just a black screen, and these people are talking as though this person isn't even there, because they don't care about this person. They're talking about their responses or their reactions to having heard a story. All right, now why does this person need to shut up? What do you tend to want to do when people are saying, hey, I wanted to hear more about such and such?
I'll say how, how you're going to do it. Or how you did it. Weren't, didn't you guys listen? You know, there was a whole thing where the narrator's talking about the fish darting here and there. You guys didn't hear that? All right. As soon as somebody gets defensive in that way, you, you've blown it. Okay. You've, you've shut down what could be an amazing amount of feedback that you get. Um, let me use that word again. These people are not giving this person feedback. But this person, by listening to the way they speak to each other, just as though two people have walked out of a movie theater after watching a great movie and they're, they're chatting about how it went down, this person hears that conversation, then they're getting the best kind of feedback you can possibly get. Um, if there's confusion expressed by these people on like page three or after this paragraph, Shut up, write it down, and you know that whether or not they were able to articulate what the real issue was, that part of your story needs some clarification. If they were unable to see one of your major conflicts, maybe that tells you that in revision you want to amplify that. Maybe if they didn't see the character arc, which is where this pointing happens, the character started like this and they ended like that. Um, if they can't see that stuff clearly, maybe you need to amplify that in your later drafts, okay? Um, but above all, this person, after having read, is just out of the picture altogether, and these folks are just honestly discussing their re reactions to having heard a story, um, including a lot of that why was it a story that you've done for Most Dangerous Game and for the Emile D'Andrea stories and for Heart. Um, and Shirley Temple 3 so far. Uh, that's it, okay? If you are here um, and you're this person and you've read and what you really want is some kind of validation or told that you're a wonderful person or if you're also here and you're this person and there are things that come up here that hurt your feelings, um, I think that means usually that this person is less interested in improving their piece than they are in being told that they're already wonderful. Okay, um, how's it feel, dude? You've been in this situation yeah. when these people are like, you know, talking about something that, that you thought was already in there very clearly and they just didn't get it. How does that feel inside? Encouraging but frustrating. You get mad, right? Yeah. You know, and when I'm in this this process and when I start getting a little like wait a minute and I feel hurt or angry about you know something that was said 99 times out of a hundred um, that's the thing that takes my story to the next level okay and uh, that's sort of why you know the, the the screen off thing the keeping out of the conversation thing even though these people know that you're listening, it, it creates a kind of psychological environment where they're, they wind up being really honest about what they heard. And that's priceless info if you're heading between drafts. Alrighty, uh, then it would be the next 30 minutes a day. I love running home from these things too, like, okay, now I'm going to do that, I know exactly what to do. Oh yeah, I see. Uh, and you want to eventually wind up doing what? You'll anticipate what they would have said as you're doing your revision. That takes some time in the shed, so head on out there, 30 minutes a day, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.